Um, g'day, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm trying something a little bit different today, which is having the webcam on to do the introduction uh, rather than just talking. Um, and yeah, you can see part of my workspace here. So the running joke that I normally run with people is that those things back there, hang on, wrong arm, I think that way. There we go. So they're all containers full of uh, parts and stuff, and the uh, the running joke that I tell people is that they're full of the ultra rare parts like uh, six one three eight and three nine dials and rotating rings. That they're, they're not, but um, it's always fun. Um, there's a cat there somewhere. There he is, and he's actually sleeping on a jacket. Anyway, um, moving on <coughs> today. Um, I'm just going to have a go at trying to remove one of the die fix springs on a uh, 6106 movement, which apparently a lot of people really struggle with. Um, they're not actually too difficult to do, uh, as long as you get the process right. They're actually quite easy once you've got that right. Now I'm just going to mess around with the focus here and, like, and uh, see if I can get a shot of it. Uh, let's have a look. So we're looking at these guys here. Uh, that's it there. So it's the uh, shock settings, and this is yeah I haven't done this before, so this is all new to me. So you're looking at the shock settings with the little lyre shaped spring. So the purpose of those in the train of this movement is to give some uh, shock protection and in theory in theory uh, better accuracy to the movement because rather than rather than the wheels uh, when you have a shock just sort of hitting a jewel or or so on they've actually got a spring on top so it keeps the uh, wheel pretty much uh, in the same place rather than it moving around that's that's the theory anyway um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the other camera which is a bit better quality and uh, I'm going to try and show my process for uh, removing the the capsule on there and hopefully I'll get it all on there so I'm gonna go straight over on there now alright so what we got here is a very fairly poor looking plate which we're gonna use for this video and I'm just pointing out the two die fix settings there on this plate so the terms I'm gonna use for the die fix spring uh, that's actually the um, the oiler that I'm gonna use to release the spring so the terms that I'm going to use for these springs is I'm going to use the term stick section which is the uh, sort of straight part of the lyre spring and the two bits that are out on the side uh, forming sort of the wire I'm going to call them the legs of the spring so what we're doing here is we're just putting some rotico at the back of the spring so that's where the legs go into the setting and I'm just putting in the oiler now and twisting slightly and that spring is popped out and now I'm just removing the rotico and you can see there the, the stick section of the spring is released which means we can get that out the way and we can get the capsule out so I'm just moving it out of the way with the tweezers and I'm going to get some Rodico and just take the cap jewel off of that and there's one cap jewel <clears throat> which hasn't ended up on the carpet so that's a pretty good result now I'm just going to show putting the spring back into the setting so I'm going to put the each sort of arm of the tweezers on either side of the stick 
pull it back a little bit and it will just go straight back into the setting again with just a tiny amount of downward pressure. Done. So that can now go into the cleaning machine. And we'll just say that we've done that and it's out of the cleaning machine. We're now going to release the spring so we can put the capsule back in. Now there's two ways you can oil these capsules. You can either oil on the, uh, the cap face, which is the generally accepted way of doing it. The Seiko service information says that you should install the jewel and then oil it from the sink end, which is actually on the other side of the jewel, which is a little bit unusual. Um, it either way probably works just fine. It probably doesn't make too much of a difference, I don't, I don't think. And I'm just going to release that spring again. And the spring is out. And I've actually just dropped the entire spring out there. So we'll come back to that in a minute. In On this uh, plate the springs have been messed around with before by a previous technician who'd actually bent them to get them out of the setting so when they've been bent they can often fall out because they're quite loose and to get them to stay in again you actually have to bend the legs out again so we're just going to look at the other the other cap jewel there and we're going to uh, repeat the process all over again so yeah when they are loose they can quite often come out. However, if they haven't really been messed with before, they, they should stay in when you release the spring. What you can do as well is you can, once you've got them out, you can very gently uh, bend the legs apart. And by doing that, you'll tighten the spring, which will make it stay in the setting a lot better, and make it a little bit easier to work with. So we're just going to repeat the same process that we did on the other one. And you can see there I've done the same thing. I've just put the rotico at the back of the spring. And now I'm going to get the oiler in there to just in the gap between the top of the uh, legs and the setting. And I actually had a bit of trouble with this one, reason being that the oiler that I was using is really old. And uh, what happened was while I was doing this, the metal part of the tool started twisting inside the plastic handle. And the problem with that is, is that when you're trying to twist it to take to um, release the spring, the whole thing was just twisting. So I wasn't really getting anywhere. But you'll see that coming up in a sec. The first go was pretty easy. So we got the jewel out and it actually came off out off the rotico, which is quite good. So now we're just going to put this spring back into the setting for cleaning. If you put these in the cleaning machine with the spring not installed back into the setting, you're guaranteed to lose them. Now that's back in. Now you're going to get to see me fumble for a while because the tool that I was using kept twisting. So we're just putting the rotico at the back of the spring again. And now we're getting the oiler in there to try and release it. And the spoiler is that I, I eventually do get it. So I suggest if you're doing this, you get a fresh oiler. And I'm still struggling with that there. I've actually got a slightly different camera set up now, so you should be able to see a bit more detail than previous previous uh, videos. So what I used to have is I used to have a large uh, tripod, which was right in front of me, and then the camera was sort of at my chest level. 
um, which was very difficult to work with. And now I've got what I have is a, uh, a desk tripod, so which is sort of in front of me rather than right up against me. And the camera's on that, which makes it considerably easier to, to work on this sort of stuff. Because it just puts all that sort of stuff at the other end and there's more space for my hands and whatever else I need to fit under the camera. So hopefully uh, future videos will look a lot better. And I think I finally got that spring. Yep. So now I'm just going to take the Rodico away again. And a little bit of Rodico got stuck on the setting. It was it's actually quite difficult to work under uh, a camera that's only you know 20 mil or an inch or whatever above your workspace. So yeah, I mean if you're working with um, like close up with magnification and stuff like that, uh, you definitely get a lot better result than what you'd get working under a camera, and it's a lot easier to work. So I've just put the spring in the out position there and we're just placing the cap jewel and I'm just going to make sure it's in its groove. I like to run the tweezer just over the top just to make sure that it's sat in its groove. And I've done this before but you probably should use Rodico here but I'm just going to put the spring back in. Done. So that's the end of the, uh, the die fix saga. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit more there, just trying to remove a bit of that Rodico that was stuck in the setting. But I'm not going to worry too much. Um, this is this is just a scrap plate, so this is never going to be a watch again. And that's the easy way to do it. So I'm just digging out just a smidge more Rodico there. And what we're going to do after this part is we're going to show what you do if you get it all wrong and the springs come out. And the easy way to put the spring back in. So what I'm going to do, this video starts with the spring actually positioned above the setting. So I'm going to have one of the legs and the stick section into the setting, which you'll see there. We're looking at the one on the right. So you can see there one leg still hanging out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Rodico. I'm going to put it on the stick end of that and just with the leg hanging out there. And then I'm going to get some tweezers and I'm just going to hook the leg in. And that's the easy way to install them if you manage to stuff it up and have one that comes out. They, they literally take seconds if you do it this way. And that's done. So you can see that the spring's back in the setting and I'll be able to eject it to put the capsule back in. So I hope that helps people that are getting stuck on this and look forward to some more videos soon. Thank you.